Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today we have with us Baylor Barbie. How are you, Baylor? I'm doing fantastic. Happy to be here. How about yourself? I'm doing amazing. I'm so happy that you came on the show. I'm so excited to learn a lot more about you. Um, you know, I went online, looked up a lot of stuff. It's very exciting what you're doing. If you, anyone can help businesses do more, in my books, you know, A1. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> so can you, can you tell us more about, you know, how you say how to create opportunities that maximize, you know, their lives and careers, right? Your audience. Can you, okay. can you explain how does that work in your realm? Okay. So well, what happened was, you know, I do a lot of speaking and professional development, uh, primarily for fortune 500 companies. And over the past couple of years, you know, during the Q and A's, the one thing I saw is everybody's talking about, if I just had an opportunity, if I just had an opportunity, you know, everybody's acting like an opportunity was something like, I hate the concept of an opportunity window. You're, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I have to, uh, you know, be at the right place, the right time, the right things have to happen. And so I started thinking to myself, I said, well, what if we, just like anything else, like when you want a new job, you go get the skills you need to go get that job, right? Uh -huh. or, or same thing as a, as a business owner. But I said, what if we took that same concept to actually opportunity? What if we made opportunity finding a hard skill, you know? Yeah. And, and that kind of like a little five-step process that we have to, A, ask ourselves some tough questions. Uh, because a lot of times we, we go through life and we think something, something, you know, especially as an entrepreneur, something didn't work in the past, right? Say, I hear people a lot of times say, I'm not good at sales, I said, mm -hmm. well, no, what happened? Are you not good at sales or did the time when you didn't have the knowledge of the experience and you tried to sell and it didn't work, but you're, you're different now, you know, we've learned mm -hmm. more. So sometimes mm -hmm. we have to ask ourselves these hard questions to remove these limits that we placed on ourselves because something didn't work back then. Uh, yeah. and so, you know, then starting to shift your mindset into a land of, of opportunity. Okay. Wait, maybe I do have the skills, you know, maybe I am a little bit better than I thought I was. Mm -hmm. and, and just that, you know, that little, it's always small tweaks, you know, yeah. it's always small tweaks. It's not these huge changes we need to make. And uh, I think the example that I give in, in, I have a book called Opportunity Engineer, you know, how they train baby elephants is yeah. when they're baby elephants, they put that little rope around their, mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. foot and put it in the ground. And, you know, for a few weeks, the elephant tries to get away and it says, I can't do it. If the, if the stake is, or the, the little rope is around my foot, it's over. And so even they grow up to be two ton yeah. beast, same sort of mindset. And that's yes. what, you know, a lot of us do because something didn't work back then. Um, we think it will never work. And so a lot of times, especially as entrepreneurs, we have to start revisiting some of the things that didn't work with the new information, knowledge, and experience that we have now. Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed. And I tell a lot of my corporate clients, what, how much better you are. So, okay, I can do this. So when you start having that, that shift in, in possibility, your mind starts to work. Right. And then, what we have to then do is, is like to call people. I say, you got to find your opportunity finders, your opportunity tool set. And mm -hmm. what that is, is asking yourself, what is it that I'm actually good at? You know, I don't believe in this whole, be a jack of all trades. Like, what am I really, really good at? And you shit down, you know? right? Right. And, 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 and doubling down on that and, and, and how I came to kind of find that I was, I was <laughs> in Colorado and they have some really tall cliffs up there. And one day I'm just, kind of sightseeing and looking around mm -hmm. and I saw these mountain goats on the sides of them. I mean, these sheer cliffs and just mountain yeah. goats hanging out, chilling. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, wow, that is absolutely crazy that these mountain goats, like what if they fall? What if they, you know, all these things. But when I did the research, what you start finding out is mountain goats, they only need two inches of space. They can balance their entire body <laughs> in that little two inches. And, and, while the rest of the world looks at them and says, hey, I'm crazy, they say, hey, this safety here, nobody can get me. My predators can't get me. I'm safe. I can nap. I can relax. So what you start to find is they're, the way they're, they can do it is the way their hooves are set up. You know, they have the yeah. hard and the soft hooves so that they can hang out. So their foundation is solid. So the rest mm -hmm. of the world says, hey, that's crazy. What if you fall? What if you fail? They say, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I'm made of, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing is true when it comes to opportunity. When we find out what we know we're good at, what sets us apart. The, the one thing about us that the world looks at says, man, that is absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. We don't have to look at it like this. It's crazy to you because you don't know what your foundation, you don't it's know perception. Like, right. What, what mm -hmm. I'm made of. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it allows you to, you know, climb those cliffs by yourself. So, mm -hmm. you know, asking yourself uh, questions, starting to shift and then, you know, get into a sharpening phase uh, 
of your of your your mindset. And, and what I mean by that is, again, I'm a researcher. I don't try to like create anything. I just find things that have worked forever mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. figure out exactly. how to apply it to here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, we don't have to invent all these new no. wheels, but I was doing a research on samurais uh, one time. And the reason that those samurai swords are so powerful is that the ancient samurai believed like the soul of who they were was in that sword. That's why this sword stayed with them you know, from the time they were young, at the dinner table, when they were, when they were, when they passed away, it was buried with them because their soul of who they were is in that sword. And I think to myself, wow, if I took that one thing that I knew I was good at, and what if I said that was my samurai sword? Like for me, it's, it's words. I try to put words together in books, mm-hmm. speeches, podcasts. I said, but what if I went through life thinking like the soul of who I am, everything I represent, my legacy, everything that I'm going to do is in these words. Mm-hmm. How much more power would I give to that? How much more focus would I give to that? And the same thing can go true of any, on any entrepreneurial venture. If, what if the soul of who you were is not who you are as a person, but in the actions you take, the service you provide, the product you put out, uh, whatever that may be, right? You're going to attack it an entirely different way. You know, they said samurais didn't even want smudges on their sword because they didn't want to rust something because it meant so much. Mm-hmm. So I started looking at that as like, okay, let's ask ourselves questions. Let's then shift our mindset, start sharpen. And then we come to this crossroads in life when it comes to opportunity, right? We have an opportunity to find it or we have an opportunity, which a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we have to create it, right? And in finding it, again, I'm a, like, for a living, I'm a professional mistake maker. That's all I do. Like I just Same. don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then go speak about it and learn the lessons. But you know, a lot of times we don't find opportunities simply because we're not looking for, we don't know like how to identify them. And I, I remember there was a time a couple of years back, a friend of mine had been wanting me to try a Brazilian jujitsu class. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to come out there. They said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you one of the geese, which is that karate looking outfit. And uh, we're going to let you go against a, you know, nine time world champion Brazilian jiu-jitsuist. So I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. I'm six foot four, 250 pounds. This guy's five, seven, 135 pounds. I was like, get this on film because I'm going to destroy this guy. I'm going to post it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what happened though, is I try to, I mean, go grab him. He does some little monkey flip, flips me over. I mean, next thing I know, I'm like, what just happened here? <laughs> and then I get up. I was like, let me try again. And I tried for like 10 minutes. It felt like 10 minutes. It was probably two to just grab a hold of him. And everything I did, he was making me like hold, eat my foot and all sorts. Of, he just knew all the holds and, and stuff like this. And what you start to find out, they learned in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And this guy said, he wasn't looking at how big I was which I equate to, we look a lot of times as entrepreneurs look at the problem, mm-hmm. how big it was. Mm-hmm. He looked at where do I need to attack to get my intended result? Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm coming at him big and strong. He knew, okay, if his foot placement's here, his arm's here, I do this, this, and this. He knew where to attack, not looking at the whole problem. And so I think as, as entrepreneurs, when we start finding opportunity, we got to st- quit worrying about, okay, what's the big problem out there? All these, you know, we could go crazy thinking about all the things that are going wrong or all the obstacles we have, but everybody has an, 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 an problems too. Everything has an Achilles heel. Like everything has a weakness. I mean, even mm-hmm. the most beautiful diamonds in the world still have flaws. So nothing's mm-hmm. flawless. Mm-hmm. And so I think from a mindset standpoint, looking at things like, okay, I, it, there's, there's a solution in here somewhere might not be just glaring, but if I train my mind to quit focusing on the problem, just focus on, okay, what is the absolute small little fix I can do that's going to change all of this? Mm-hmm. Uh, like the guy did in Brazil, you just do. So in finding opportunity, uh, looking at it like that, but then, you know, go ahead. You always find, like, you always look for what could go right. So you're always supposed to be searching for what can, what changes can, what can I do to make this better? Not worrying about what your past results were or what kind of history you had with a specific business or what your friend had, what kind of experience they had in that industry or business. If you go by outside circumstances, it's so much more difficult. Um, Once you start living from inside out, you can form, you can create your own economy right that way. Absolutely. Ooh, I like that. I, I like that. Uh, that I like that. Um, and I, and I agree. And I think that's the thing is, is, and you only have, you know, 
opportunity, the beauty of opportunity is it doesn't care about what you did yesterday. No. So whether you're the most successful person in the world yesterday, or you just have been royally messing up everything for the, your whole life. It's now that matters. Not care. I think that's, yeah. that's it. That's all yeah. that does. And then we yeah. start looking at like creating opportunity. You know, I started to realize how much we overlook it because we go in for a, a societal view of what we think opportunity is, which means like, Oh, people like, well, once I get this series A funding, or once I get this new yeah. CTO, or you know, mm-hmm. all this crazy stuff. And then you, you're always thinking like end goal. And, I, and I'm not saying don't have big goals. You have what to have I big, beautiful saying, goals. Yep. You do. But yeah. I do think that the opportunity to get there is a lot closer than we think. Case in mm-hmm. point, one of my favorite stories is, is uh, Sam Brennan in, in the 1840s. Like mm-hmm. all the people, the California gold rush is going on. Everybody <laughs> is fleeing to California to go get rich in the gold mines, right? And he was going to do the same thing. And then one day before he got ready to go, he realized I have the only store between San Francisco and the actual California gold mines. So rather than check, because you know, his end goal was to get rich, right? Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. A lot of people's end goal is. But he realized I don't have to do it by hoping and trying to find gold. What he did is he stopped short of that and just sold picks and shovels to all the gold miners. Mm -hmm. And he became the first millionaire in California, the first multimillionaire (laughs) in the California gold rush, never had to get gold in his life. Mm -hmm. And so what what I'm saying in terms of creating an opportunity is like, you got to ask yourself, like, what is the actual end game? So many people don't know that. Like, is the actual for them was the actual end game to find gold or to get rich. It's mm-hmm. actually to get rich. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways to get there that doesn't require that end result. That's what I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. sell the picks and shovels to people. Yeah. Don't just try to pay them for gold. You say, once, once you have that focus, once you have that focus on that big, beautiful goal, these opportunities will pop up and then you just have to be really aware and, and take those opportunities on. They might kind of divert you from what you had planned, but like you said, the right. end result, if it's getting rich, that's what you're trying to do, right? You can't be just so stuck on a specific plan. A- absolutely. And, I, and I, you know, I think that whole, it's, and I see a, a lot of, I mean, this goes in the corporate world and the entrepreneur world. It's the ego that comes into mm. our play to say, well, I want to get rich, but it has to be this yeah, way. Yeah, I, I like, see that. Well, it's not really what you, so your end goal is not to get rich. No. Your end goal <laughs> is to be right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's a whole different conversation, you know? Mm. And, and, and I think a lot of this is, is just opportunity. It's like opportunity is there and it wants to work with you. It wants to work for you if you're opportunity minded. But if you're trying to battle it with like, I want opportunity, but I want it to be my way. That's, that's dumb. That's like if Elon yeah. Musk jumps in our clubhouse right now and it's just <laughs> like, Hey guys, y'all two have amazing podcasts. Uh, I'd like you to come do them in space. And we're like, no, 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 we're only going to do them. We're not doing them yeah, on Mars. We just have to do it this way. <laughs> because my mission statement and, and your mission yeah. statement, we miss out. Yeah. Because yeah. we thought, you know, it had to be this. So I think a lot of this opportunity finding is like, can I remove myself, a, my ego from my, from my agenda and figure out what it is that I really want. And, and you would just be surprised and going through life. Like I wake up every day and say, okay, today there's going to be opportunity. Like I have to be looking for them because if you're not looking for like, and, and I ask people this and, and, and people all times, I need an opportunity. I say, okay, what does that look like for you? They have no idea. It's the same thing with, with especially in a lot of entrepreneurs and do a lot of seminars. Say, Who wants to be successful? Everybody raises their hand. I say, what does that look like to you? Mm. Uh, Can you paint a picture? can you paint the picture in vivid vivid details yeah. right and so I, I just a lot of time what we do is just looking at these small little tweaks to, to start gearing our mind to literally looking for it and that starts by knowing what do i really truly want? because you you, you go, a lot of people go through life and they think they want this because everybody says this is the path yeah. you're taking. This following is masses you, you follow the masses and you and you never stop to think like wait does this even if i get this is that really going to make me happy? And your life yeah. gets simpler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that actual, that uh, ability to have that clarity 
It's so important. And then mindset, like you said, mindset, I think is just the foundation, like everything when it comes to success or failure, you know, and that limiting belief that you have inside sometimes is is hidden right deep down in your, in your subconscious mind that you don't even know is there and it's holding you back. So if you, once you believe from inside, you're capable of doing something, you open up a new world. Like you have, there's so much potential in every single person out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I start digging deep with a lot of people and, and you ask people, why, why aren't you taking this chance? Like, you know, now what you want mm-hmm. right? and a lot of people can get that. We get the clarity on that and they know the, the, the general path that they need to take and then they don't take it. And, mm-hmm. and that baffled me. And I was like, why, why are you doing this? And I think so many people are afraid to mess up. Like we're afraid yeah. to be wrong. Right. What will um, people think? Right. What That's would another people one. think? Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, the, the truth. What if I fail, of, right? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, a friend of mine, he's a uh, professional basketball player. And what, every day we work out at the same time. And he was always shooting, shooting, shooting. One day he just wasn't making a lot of – they just weren't going in. And uh, I told him, I said, hey, uh, Dre, man, rough day today. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, you weren't making as many shots. He was Good. like – it's all good, Baylor. He said, the misses are just as important as the makes. And Mm. I said, nah, you're a basketball player. I think the makes are more important. (laughs) And he said, no, he said, you know, the makes in life give you momentum, but the misses are where you learn what you need to correct, what you need to change, what you need to tweak. So they're equally as important. And I think that's so true in just taking chances on things, right? Because Mm -hmm. if all we're doing is things that we know we're going to get right, we're going to get blindsided down the road versus if we miss early, I'd much rather miss early than miss late. Right. You know, missing early enough to say, okay, I can correct this. I know. Okay. That didn't work. I need to tweak my approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's wrong. And so knowing that, I mean, I've built a a career off that. I literally like, I try to do a bunch of random stuff to be able to move my mind forward and be able to have content to, to share with people. Like currently I'm, training for a, a, in two weeks, a 50 mile trail run race. I've never obviously ran 50 miles, wow. uh, but the training for it, my brother and I have been training for it. And, you know, you have all these doubts, all these, all the things <laughs> that I talk to people about, yeah, but again, you get- I'm putting myself in a position to quote unquote fail. And is it really fast? Like I've spent six and a half months learning everything I can about ultra endurance racing. And because I just want to see what I'm capable of. Right. And, and you're going to push this, this. you're going to push to succeed, but if failure happens, that's a learning, right? Yeah. Then it's, yeah. Then is, is it failure? Like I'll know like, okay, I gave six and a half months of, of focused effort with an Olympian coach mm-hmm. and I know what I, you know, where the limit is or, 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 or where it's not. Right. So, but we have to be able to put ourselves in those situations and, and so, I, I, so much good comes from that. Of course, of course. And uh, the the TEDx talk you did, the science of opportunity is pretty much what we've been talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in a, in a pretty, pretty much is. And, and again, it, it is a science. Like it really, I, like I told you, I don't try to create anything new, but you start finding when you just start searching. Like when I started focusing on opportunity, just even in writing the book yeah. and, and looking at the, how the mind works and, and, and things like that, you start realizing it's like, oh my goodness, this is, this is, this is crazy. Especially the, the front part we're talking about, like with the elephants and these, yeah. these false beliefs. Mm-hmm. I don't think false I got into the TED talk, but, but a lot of our, when people say, oh, I'm not a morning person or, oh, I'm not a sales guy. Oh, I'm not. No, that's what you, that's what you believe. But when you start, I mean, I started doing like the science it's like, how does the brain work? And what, what I found was pretty interesting about the brain is, you know, you have like, your thoughts are stored in like the hippocampus part of your brain. You have another part called the amygdala where emotion is stored. And so in a, in, in a high, like a stressful, whether you're in love or you're stressed at business, the amygdala says, hey, this is what you need to focus on. This is what's important, right? And so you start thinking about all these different things. And so you form this picture in your mind of this is how it was. Like I got turned down the first time I tried to do sales. Uh, the customer was horrible. I'm not a sales guy. And we, and we, and they keep, keep experiencing. <laughs> right. And so, and, but you think about it, when you take a picture, that picture stays the picture, right? But your mind actually works a little bit differently. Anytime you get new information, 
it adds that to the picture. Like I tell people, you think about when people are in a relationship and they're happy and then they break up and they go back and look at those old photos and they see everything they hate about that person. Mm -hmm. So think about like a codec picture that changed depending on your emotion, right? Mm -hmm our minds work the same thing. They work the same way. If we're just reinforcing it with all the wrong things, okay, I'm a bad sales guy. Uh, every time I think about them, add to that, you just get worse and worse. But you have yeah, the man. opportunity, the beauty of, of opportunity is you can look at the other way and say, okay, I'm gonna feed myself new information for this picture. I was a sales guy, I didn't go well, but I know new stuff here. I'm gonna input, I learned something new here. I took something from here. And you start to create this new narrative because your mind's just gonna believe what you tell it. It doesn't have a sense of humor. It doesn't understand sarcasm. It's just gonna, okay, hey, I'm a great sales guy. And over time, you start to believe it. Once you start to believe it, the whole world will see it down the road. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, I, that's, you mentioned your book that you wrote. I noticed you wrote a lot of books. So <laughs> which, one is, which one is your favorite? <laughs> Oh, man, my favorite book was probably uh, Wintality. If I had to pick one, uh, the, you know, winning mentality, it's called Wintality. That book was probably the most me book. Um, uh, if I like, if you want to know who I am as a person, yeah. care about results, not excuses, yeah. that would be it. Um, but I, you know, I like books for the simple fact that they give you an opportunity to, it's like a snapshot of your, your mind and where you're at. I like to see growth. Like, yeah, I don't care about the sales as much as I care about. Did I grow as a person? Growth. Every, yeah. You know, Same like, here. Yeah. Growth is so important. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, uh, uh, this book, you, you have it available on Amazon, right? So anyone can purchase mm -hmm. yeah, from all, there. Yeah. All, yeah. All my books on uh, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, all those, uh, all those good retailers, iBooks. Uh, and then I'm, you know, I'm working on number, I guess, eight right now, eighth book. So, so if any asp aspiring, you know, entrepreneurs, if they're trying to, to get out of the nine to five and get into this world, you know, I noticed that your message basically is trusted by top fortune 500 com uh, companies, <laughs> universities, large scale organizations, right? How did you get to that point? Like, is there anything that you can in cold notes kind of provide some value to listeners that could help them? Yeah. So great question. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the couple things are important. And the first thing, um, you know, one of my favorite quotes by Michelangelo, they asked him about the statue of David and they said, how did you create it? He said, mm -hmm. well, it was simple. He said, I just, I saw the statue in the marble and I chipped away until I set it free. And <laughs> yes, I think that's true. What, I heard why, that. What's so important about that is if you're, you know, entrepreneur, you're trying to escape the nine to five, we don't need to really learn anything new. A lot of what we need to do is unlearn a lot of stuff. The nine to five world, a lot of times people teach you, train you to be an asset to them, not necessarily mm -hmm. an asset to yourself. And I'm not knocking, you know, <laughs> even, even, no, even the door, yeah. even the education system is really yeah, yeah, geared 100%. towards, you know, training you how to be an employee or, you know, it's different, it's, right? Exactly. So asking first and foremost, asking yourself like, Okay, if I unlearned all this stuff, if I chipped away all this fear, worry, societal pressures, like who am I at my core? What do I like to do? What makes me happy? What would I, what would I actually like? You'll start to find your, your stress in life comes from not being in congruency with who you actually are. Yeah. But once you start to figure out what that is, what you have to ask yourself then is like, how then could I make somebody's life better by doing what I love? You know, case in point, one of the new initiatives I'm working, I love, I'm a video game player. I love oh, yeah? Xbox. <laughs> nice. But uh, now that I'm working, uh, we're working on a little program to make it a mental health initiative because there's all these studies on how it combats depression and things like that. I was like, okay, if I can serve people with it, then there's an avenue to, uh, and nobody knows that yet, but this first time <laughs> I'll put it out there, then there's an avenue for it to grow and be able to continue to, to, to do that. So ask yourself, like, I, Take what I love. Number two, how can it benefit other people? That's the key right there. And then the third thing, the most important skill or, or uh, uh, characteristic I think people could have is uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur is to be the CEO of your own life. Even mm -hmm. if you have a job right now with the other title, be the CEO of your own life. CEOs, if you think about a CEO at a company, they don't change who they are for anybody because they know 
who they are. They know that they're the top spot. You got to start conducting your life that way right now. Not You're not a CEO the day you open up your own business. You're the CEO right now. How would you act if you were the CEO and you left it? Because you develop those skill set, mm-hmm. right? You develop that, that mindset of like, this is how I operate. I operate as somebody who's in control. I mean, in your own little bubble, maybe you're second to the lowest on the totem pole. Can you respect the people under you and lead them, right? Mm-hmm. So exhibit all the qualities you want, uh, and start to move into that thing. And then it's a natural transition. You're not you jumping in the water. You know how to swim. Like, I know how to swim. It's just a bigger ocean now Yeah, with a lot yeah. more freedom. It's a, it's a prep work, right? You're prepping it by, by thinking that way and taking right. control over your own life first. Right. And that, cause, cause I tell you, people think I'm going to be an entrepreneur cause I want to be my own boss. And you don't realize yeah. like, no, you're answering to everybody, your clients, your customers, yeah, you really, you just bottom, multiply, so. you just multiply your bosses. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So you have to know your like who you are and how you operate because it's, it's too late to figure it out down. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't, but you're going to, you're going to be in a lot better position if you start acting that way right now. <laughs> That's uh, great advice. Thank you so much. And can you, um, is for, for example, any business that wanted to work with you, they just simply, is there a way that you consult them or they have to go, do you have a course? Like, yeah. how does it work with you? Yeah, with- so um, individuals uh, can go to BaylorBarbie.com, but uh, my corporate clients, so Shark Theory, uh, which is my podcast, but yes. SharkTheory.com is my corporate site for for teams and, and management and the seminars and, and those kind of things. And uh, so there's booking on both of those and we can definitely get together and, and consult because again, I don't have a, I don't believe in a one size fits all approach. Of course. You know? and, mm-hmm. and I'm not always the best person for the fit and I'll, I'll tell companies, but we can definitely have a discovery call and say, Hey, like what are the actual needs? Um, and then bring solutions uh, to those. But, but again, the one thing I want to tell just entrepreneurs out there, and again, I appreciate you for, for having me on is you're so much closer than you think you are. Like you're not, People think I just I'm so far away, but like, if you look at the the stats, if you were to leave San Francisco on a boat head for Tokyo, Japan, and you were one degree off when you started, that one degree over that three week journey would have you ending up in like Sydney, Australia, or real close to Sydney, Australia. That one degree off. Oh, yeah. But you think about the positive side of that, you don't need to make all these huge changes in your life if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you're an entrepreneur that's struggling. One degree, one small change. One maybe way you look at yourself a little bit differently, one little degree of some new skill, one degree can change your whole life mm. over the course of this entire year. So you're closer mm. than you think. You're closer than you think. So true. And I, by the way, I love that name, Shark Theory Podcast. Yeah, it. yeah it's awesome. <laughs> so what, yeah. what is this podcast about? So you, what do you, you, you have guests on or is it just you talk no, about I this think, stuff? I think I've had four guests like in the first like 10 episodes and now I'm on episode 300 or something. And uh, I haven't had a guest. That's it. Oh, I think I have <laughs> on. Well, it, it, so they're, awesome. they're micro, they're micro. I do a daily micro episode podcast and it's all about perspective. Um, mm-hmm. How it started was Again, I listen to my Q and A's with corporate clients, and everybody's like, "I just wish I was a shark. I wish I was just a go getter, go getter, go getter." Yeah. But if you actually watch sharks, sharks now they have to move forward because the way that they oxygenate their gills is by moving forward through the water. But they're not in a hurry to do anything, so they're patient, calm, Be- but yeah, active. They're- yeah, they're not just looking for any fish. They focus on what they want, and when they find what they want, they go after it with everything. So. The whole goal is like, how can we be patiently progressive in pursuit of what we really want? Not worrying about the little fish in life, figuring out what we really want, that meal, that goal, that dream uh, objective, and give everything we have to that. And so in doing so, I literally just I do random stuff every day and uh, awesome. try to extract lessons from it in like 10 minute episodes. Cause cool. You know, uh, so yeah, I, I have fun. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get in there and listen to some episodes. That's awesome. Yeah, Cause I'm they're short. That. I like short episodes. Me too. I, I want people to be able to get a, I mean, I put them out every morning. I want people to mm. be able to get something on the way to work or, or yeah. you know, just need a little pick me up, but more than anything, it's just to help people realize, Hey, if you start to look for the I things mean, I have to do content every single day, it's like, I got to find lessons in everything, Yeah. but training people's mind to like, look, for lessons themselves. Like this morning I did one on a, I had a, I can't even pronounce the word char, charcuterie board. You know, those like cheese boards with the, with the crackers and the different 
things like that. I, charcuterie, it's like a French word. I can't oh, okay. remember. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. I, I, anyway, it's one of those like yeah. fancy, when you go to those parties, the fancy spreads with the cheeses and olives. Oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I had one of those. Just, I was like, you know what? There's a lot of lessons here. I didn't know how to attack it. So I was like, hey, here's what we can do. We can, you start with what you like venture out into something new, you know, and then figure out how to put them together. So just find a small. Yeah, that's awesome. Like that. Yeah, it's so, so important. That's great. Um, I just I have to say I'm so grateful that you came on the show and got to understand, learn more about all the things that you do. Um, I appreciate you. I especially appreciate you for what you're doing to for businesses. And that's pretty much my focus as well, just trying to help entrepreneurship grow and everything. So I'm so glad that you took the time to come on this show. Well, it's been my pleasure. Like I said, I think I love the, the format. I love how you go about it because, I, you know, you, I, I, I keep track of it. I was like, man, this is what people need. They need a, a source like that. You have different perspectives, different ways of looking at things. And, and so I just like, I commend you. I, I wish like when I first started my business, I would have had your show where it was 15 years now I've been doing this stuff, but I wish I would have, cause there's so much you can pick up from. So I, I, said, yeah. I commend you yeah, to, thank for you. having a centralized hub of helping entrepreneurs with yeah. all the nooks and crannies and directions and paths and things we can go. So I yeah, appreciate thank you. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being on show again. All your information will be in the show notes. So if anybody Perfect. wants to get in touch with you, they can. And uh, again, thanks again and have a great day. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, thanks.